Hello, this is Jim, W4JBM. I wanted to uh, talk a little bit about function generators and, and actually something interesting that um, I discovered. It's been about a year ago or so now that, uh, uh, that I started looking into these and, and uh, found it interesting and useful. Uh, if you have a tablet, this is a, a, a Samsung Note, I believe it's a Note 7 uh, tablet. Um, there's a couple of different pieces. It's, a, it's Android operating system based. Um, there's also similar things available for iPads and iPhones. Um, and it works on a phone as well as a, a tablet. Uh, but there are function generator um, pieces of software out there, applications, apps that are uh, available. And uh, they actually are, I mean, the, the, the capabilities just in terms of generating a uh, a waveform are, are fairly impressive. Uh, I can uh, do, of course, the traditional sine wave. Uh, I also got the, the sawtooth wave, square wave. Um, I can set the phase between the two. I can bias them with a DC offset, set frequency amplitude, which are normal for something like a square wave. I may want to set the duty where uh, it's on 10% of the time, off 10% of the time. Uh, this particular one, uh, which is from Cool, uh, and is a free. This is a free application. Uh, it's dual channel, and uh, I can also do sweeps. Uh, I can can change the uh, the frequency and so sweep across uh, uh, a range of frequencies. Also do sweeps with uh, with amplitude. There's um, burst capability. Um, I can do modulation. It's got white noise and pink noise output, uh, and then a couple memory slots to uh, to store configuration. So uh, a fairly powerful powerful uh, w a piece of, of, of software, uh, not a very nice function generator um, that, that is, uh, uh, is, is just an app. Uh, if you look at uh, one of the other ones that's out there uh, from, uh, this is from Black Cat Systems, uh, this one's a little bit more um, rudimentary, uh, I guess would be the word uh, in terms of uh, how do I get rid of my uh, my keyboard here? I don't know. Um, but anyway, this one's a little bit more rudimentary in terms of the uh, uh, the 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 uh, interface. I can put in a frequency in hertz. Uh, this is a uh, magnitude for the left channel, right channel. This is the uh, the type of signal. Uh, that I want, and again, it can be sine, triangle, sawtooth, square, pulse, white, pink, uh, or it can be off. Um, and then on the the details, um, again, I, it, a lot of these showed up back over on that table, um, but I can see that um, uh, here I've got 180 hertz for the frequency, full output, 99 point or 99 is the uh, full volume output. I can have a phase difference between the two, uh, and then again, mode is, is uh, whether it's a sine wave or whatever. <clears throat> By having the phase difference, we'll actually take a look at some of the um, uh, different types of waveforms uh, here in a little bit, but uh, it gives you a, a, a fair amount of flexibility and capability uh, to be able to do that. This one has, it's just got this one set of screens with all these, but this is actually fairly handy. Like here, I've got this, uh, the one one turned on and all the others off. It's easy to switch back and forth. Memories uh, and the other one would do something similar, but uh, uh, this one I found a little easier just for, for quickly um, setting up things. So let's talk about uh, one thing that you might wanna wanna take into account before uh, before you actually hook this up to anything. So I mean, I was a little bit leery about just taking my uh, my tablet or my phone and and starting to hook it up to uh, to random devices. Uh, the other thing I found pretty quickly was that the output levels uh, from the function generator is designed to go into, I believe it's uh, 600 ohm headsets or 120 ohm headsets uh, that are normal. It, it, it's a fairly high impedance and a fairly low voltage um, and lower than I needed for uh, for most of the applications that I was interested in. So I built this. Uh, this is just a simple, it's, an, it's basically an isolation power supply. Um, you can feed it with plus minus 12 volts. Uh, there's a pair of BNCs for the input, but there's also just a, a regular headphone jack there, so I can use just a, a through cable um, with a three pin 
uh, like stereo connector at uh, both ends, plug one end into the headphone jack and one into here. Uh, I can get that out also on a headphone jack or on a pair of BNCs. Um, I've got it broke out right and left. Um, and this actually, I built this so that I could take uh, the input in and then feed it into the oscilloscope. These are terminated, um, so if I plug in a headphone here, uh, I believe I terminated it with a, a 100 ohm resistor for each channel. Um, I did the same on the uh, the outputs. I can't remember if that's 100 ohms or 50 ohms that I put there, but basically a little bit of uh, uh, of load so I don't get any ringing. Uh, if I connect this, um, I wasn't really particularly concerned about the exact, using this exactly like I might, uh, a more precision uh, or, or laboratory grade type of, of uh, function generator. This does multiply it by 10. Originally I built it for uh, multiplication by 5. I didn't find that to be enough. Uh, it uses a 1458 uh, dual op amp uh, and it is non-inverting and runs from DC up to around 50 kilohertz. Uh, and actually you can find uh, details on this. I wrote a book uh, and, and that's what I originally used this for um, that talks about how you can generate uh, waveforms on the oscilloscope that are uh, kind of artistic and, and pretty to look at. This, uh, this isolation amplifier uh, was part of what I needed to, uh, to make that work. But let's take a quick look at some of the, uh, the patterns that we can generate uh, on an oscilloscope screen given the, the kind of flexible uh, function generators that, that now you can get uh, as a free app or a low-cost app uh, on your phone or, or tablet. Okay, so let's take a quick look at some of the patterns that we can make and uh, talk just a little bit about them. Um, I've basically got white noise uh, up there now. If we generate a sine wave, actually a pair of sine waves, on the X and the Y axis that are 90 degrees out of phase, uh, we get a circle. Um, and that's what we're looking at there. So that one's uh, fairly simple. Actually, there's if you want more details on... Uh, on the settings I'm using or how I'm, I'm doing this, um, it, they're, they're available in the, the book I mentioned earlier, um, or feel free to ask any questions in the, uh, the comments area down below. Uh, but this is, uh, this is 180 hertz uh, sine wave uh, on the X and the Y channel uh, with a 90 degree phase shift between them. So another thing that we can do is, that's uh, pink noise, that's not what we wanted. Um, we can generate sine waves of different frequencies uh, between the two. And there's an option to synchronize that, uh, that brings the, the waveforms into sync. Here what I've got is a, um, a 200 hertz signal and a 300 hertz signal. So a, a conventional uh, Lejour figure, um, you know, oversimplifying it. We know we've got a two to three uh, ratio of the frequencies because we've got two humps on one side and three humps on the, the tops and the bottoms. Um, and they were, earlier they were uh, out of phase, uh, but with the synchronized option, I can bring them uh, back into phase. So another option that we can look at is if we take, uh, earlier we had the, the uh, sine wave that was um, offset with uh, 90 degree um, phase. If we go to uh, a square wave uh, and have square waves on both the X and the Y and at 90 degrees we get this, basically uh, four dots. There's some glare there that makes it a little difficult to see, but uh, four dots. Now I can overlay that with something uh, if I want to, like this is a uh, uh, 800 hertz uh, signal on both the X and Y axis, all, X axis also offset by uh, uh, by 90 degrees. So the the um, the frequency and the, the signal that's drawing the circles is fast enough that for each of the four dots we saw before, we're getting uh, several circles drawn each time. So basically, we've uh, got four circles um, that we're looking at up on the the screen. So now. Let's take a look at something a little different. Um, a lot of people these days have never 
worked with uh, with analog computers, but um, it, back uh, back when I went to college, actually analog computers were already obsolete at that point, but um, uh, they still were around, and uh, occasionally you'd you'd stumble across one in a storage closet or something like that, and could uh, could play a little bit. Uh, a lot of times oscilloscopes, and if you look at like function generators, uh, that comes from the uh, the concept of having functions, different functions that you could feed into uh, analog computers. A lot of times oscilloscopes were used as the display for uh, analog computers to, to show you the results. What I've got going now is just, uh, it's a circle like I had earlier, uh, except it's much, much slower. Um, and uh, you can see it going around. This is set at um, uh, it takes 10 seconds for one entire revolution uh, around the screen. So y you could have, uh, this This could be, for example, a function of, say, the Earth orbiting uh, around the Sun. So now I could put something on top of that, an additional orbit. Um, this time uh, there's a smaller orbit that's taking place 12 times for every complete revolution of the earlier orbit. So conceptually this could be the the moon uh, showing, and uh, obviously scales are totally wrong, but uh, the moon orbiting the earth as the earth orbits the, uh, the sun. So um, you know, again, analog computers, uh, stuff like this might have been the output uh, uh, to, to give you a visual uh, indication of what you were were looking at uh, as you ran simulations and stuff. So, um, at the end of the day, basically what we've got um, we've got the the oscilloscope. I am running it through uh, the the 10x amplifier, and then that 10x amplifier is connected to uh, the tablet that's running the, um, uh, the. In this case, it's the Black Cat uh, function generator software and give me these these different figures um, all based on just different uh, different settings of sine waves square waves different frequencies uh, different phase offsets and stuff like that so some interesting things that you can do uh, in terms of making patterns uh, there's some other approaches to making patterns that uh, use uh, active devices for filtering and, and uh, even passive devices for some sim simple uh, simple patterns. But you can make some really interesting things with uh, really nothing more. I've got the oscilloscope, we've got an oscilloscope around. If you have a tablet or a phone that's running uh, Android uh, operating system or iPhone, uh, you can get the software. And really the only thing that you need to make is uh, the uh, the amplifier and like I said it's just a 10x amplifier um, they go it's a direct coupled DC coupled uh, and it's good up to around 50 kilohertz or so although none of the frequencies that we've worked with uh, in any of these patterns is anywhere near that so I hope you uh, enjoyed it uh, I always appreciate uh, likes and subscribes and I hope you have a great day thanks a lot